So why don't we? Ditto. Okay, good. So let's start talking a little bit about the rotator cuff. And uh, there are a lot of causes. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about impingement, which we've already talked about, carry through. But I'd like to really talk about the pathogenesis of rotator cuff disease and then what the tendon changes look like on an MR scan. So we've talked about impingement. So what's really occurring here is that with tendons and ligaments throughout the body, every time I use them, you're getting microscopic tears of the collagen fibers. Uh, but there's a repair mechanism, and as long as you don't tear the fibers more rapidly than the repair mechanism can repair them, uh, the tendons are fine and they're all physiologic. But once the, uh, the tendon injury occurs faster than the repair can occur, you start getting changes where the ends of the little co collagen fibers no longer mend properly. You get a reparative kind of uh, scar tissue in that location, and you start getting what we call degenerative changes or tendinosis. And this characteristically occurs earliest in very specific location of tendons. There's the, the distal part of the Achilles tendon, and there's the, uh, uh, the distal end in the, of the supraspinatus tendon. And these are areas where the tendons are relatively long, and those part of the tendons have the poorest vasculature. And they've done uh, studies of the microvasculature of tendons in that location and degenerative changes and subsequent tears tend to occur earliest or most frequently in areas where the tendon itself has the poorest uh, circulation. And with poor, you, in order to repair mechanisms to work, you have to have blood flow. And if you have limited blood flow, it impairs repair. And therefore, those are the areas where you're most likely to get degenerative change. It's kind of throughout the body. Once you get enough degenerative disease, then you start getting macroscopic tears, uh, and it can either be within the tendon or from the surface of the tendon, and then you start losing mechanical integrity. The microscopic tears can coalesce together. You can get a very large tear and, and then uh, eventually rupture of the tendon, uh, depending on the mechanism. So this is really thought to be the pathogenesis. If you look at collagen fibers, as you know, it's a triple helix. Inside that triple helix, you've got water that's bound uh, to the collagen fibers. And when this is normal, it has a very short T2 time, so it's really black on both T1 and T2 sequences. When you start getting degenerative changes, what you get are tears of the collagen fibers. In that area, the torn fibers absorb more water, so you get more water in that location. And, and that... Uh, uh, the water is still mostly bound, so the T2 isn't real long, so it tends to be dark on T2-weighted images, but you, since you have more water here, you have more hydrogen molecules, you start getting increased signal intensity on the short TE images. So this is what we typically call tendinosis or mild degenerative changes. When it becomes more severe, you start getting frank flu collection of fluid. The, the water in these areas is more mobile, and as we'll talk about in the physics lectures, that means that the T2 time is longer. So when you get pockets of fluid collecting in among the collagen fibers, uh, you start getting increased signal intensity on both the short TE and the long TE images. And then you can get frank tears uh, where you have separation of the collagen fibers and fluid collection in it, either in terms of cysts or a complete rupture of the tendon. So that's kind of the way uh, the, the degenerative disease progresses uh, within the tendon due to repetitive trauma. So you have repetitive trauma, you get a biochemical breakdown of the, the structure of the molecules, you get repair mechanisms, and you can either get tendinosis or you can go on to keep tearing it to get partial tears, full thickness tears. If you have a chronic tear, uh, one of the healing mechanisms is it absorbs uh, calcium pyrophosphate, and you can get calcific deposits within the tendon, which we typically call tendonitis or uh, calcific tendonitis. Uh, uh, and there is some inflammatory condition here because the calcification can be inflammatory, but a lot of the edema we see in the areas of calcific tendonitis that's symptomatic is probably because of the, the tear surrounding the calcific deposits, uh, which is part of the uh, etiology of the calcif calcium deposition. 
Now, they've done histologic, histologic studies. This was in 1991, uh, where they looked at torn tendons uh, in uh, cadavers and also in surgical biopsies. And they found that all torn tendons, even in young individuals, showed histologic evidence of surrounding tendinosis. So the bottom line is it's very difficult to tear a normal tendon or uh, a normal tendon. That uh, uh, it's only tendons that become degenerated that tend to tear. And in young people, as you know, uh, the, the loss of mechanical integrity either occurs from the bone, which it attaches to, which in young kids typically is the weak link, or in, in teenagers, it muscle tears, which are the weak link, but not the tendon. In older individuals, the tendons tend to tear. And that's because older individuals tend to have tendon, tendonotic tendons and, and all of their tendons, especially the major tendons that are under strain. So when we get ro rotator cuff tears, uh, uh, what, what pe uh, people have looked at uh, cadavers, and they looked at a large series of cadavers where they looked at the tendons uh, 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 in post-mortem. And what they found that a third of people dying at this particular hospital had partial or full thickness tears uh, in, in their shoulder. We don't know whether they were symptomatic or not, but it turns out that older individuals, which most of these people who died were older individuals, uh, rotator cuff tears are extremely common. Uh, it turns out, now it was thought back in Near's day that the primary cause of rotator cuff tears was due to outlet impingement. If that were the case, then in these studies, you would expect that the majority of tears would be on the bursal side surface. But it turns out when you actually look at cadavers, and also if you look at arthroscopic studies, the majority of the tears uh, are not bursal side, uh, they are articular side, uh, which uh, is strong evidence that it's a primary traction mechanism and a de de degenerative tearing mechanism rather than mechanical impingement from the, uh, from the bone. It turns out if you look at overhead athletes, uh, 40% have partial or full thickness tears. Uh, and as you, you'll see, uh, if you actually look at MR scans in Major League Baseball players that uh, we do all the time here, uh, rotator partial tears and full thickness tears are extremely common in baseball players. Uh, a few years ago, there was a baseball pitcher who was well known for the Dodgers who developed shoulder pain, got an MR scan, and he had a full thickness tear the supraspinatus tendon. Uh, maybe I told you the story already. But anyway, he was, because of the tear in his rotator cuff, it was decided, decided to trade him to the Boston Red Sox. And the next year with the Boston Red Sox, with his rotator cuff tear, he won the Cy Young Award for the best pitcher in Major League Baseball. The surprising thing is that uh, a rotator cuff tear itself uh, does not, preclude you from being a major athlete, uh, so uh, uh, which, is, which is kind of interesting. And it also turns out, uh, as we'll see later on, I've got partial tears in both of my supraspinatus tendons, and uh, at the last minute both times I decided not to have surgery, but the only thing that keeps me from being symptomatic is actually doing exercise. If I lay off exercise for, of my shoulders for an extended period of time, uh, the pain comes back. But if I keep doing shoulder exercises, the, they're asymptomatic. I can't explain that. I don't know why. But a number of shoulder surgeons who I've talked to, and so a lot of athletes I've talked to, have had similar experiences. You would think exercise would make it more symptomatic if you have a partial tear or a small full thickness tear. Uh, but but anyway, that's that's something to also remember. Could it be that you're strengthening the supporting muscles, so well, less strain? Uh, that's the theory behind the physical therapy for people who have full thickness tears. You try to strengthen the muscles on either side and think that that stabilizes it. Uh, but it seems like if I actually exercise the tendon that's actually torn, it tends to be most effective. So in, anyway, uh, there, there's a lot we still don't understand that doesn't make sense to me. 
So what does all this look like on an MR scan? Well, we used to do T1 and T2 weighted images. As you now, now know, we primarily do T2 and PD fat sat images now, as we talked about. But typically, the normal tendon should be black on both sequences, as we see here. The muscular tendon S junction should be right around the 12 o'clock position, as we see here. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, when you get tendinosis, you start getting increased signal intensity on the short TE images. And here, this is a little bit more severe tendinosis, so we can also see it as abnormal signal intensity on the T2-weighted image. So a low level of tendinosis would be black on T2. Moderate tendinosis shows increased signal intensity on both. We'll explain that a little bit more when we get to the physics section. And then uh, the, this is uh, tendinosis. This is somewhat of an arthrogram. Now, the one thing to be aware of is that when you get tendinosis, uh, you have very friable tissue, and that tissue tends to absorb the contrast from either IV or arthrographic injection. So tendinotic tendons can enhance with contrast and imbibe the contrast. And here uh, we can see the increased signal intensity uh, within the, the supraspinatus tendon here. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, in this particular case. And here's just another example of a little bit of increased signal intensity on T1, normal on T2, and increased signal intensity on PD fat set. Again, this is a case of uh, tendinosis of the supraspinatus tendon. I don't know why this is here, but what we see here is somebody had a repair of the uh, uh, supraspinatus tendon. What's happened here is this, notice that the muscular tendinous junction is retracted. As I said, it's supposed to be around the 12 o'clock position. It's right here uh, on this patient, so it's retracted all the way back to the glenoid. This is the distal end of the supraspinatus tendon. The, the construct has torn here, and what we see is this black line continuing from the tendon down to where the suture anchor is placed is, is scar, and this is called scar in situ. And you can actually have tears of the supraspinatus tendon, which scar over so that you can have a significant uh, rotator cuff tear without communication between the joint space and the subacromial subdeltoid bursa. So you can have significant rotator cuff tears without a positive arthrogram. And that's why MR is really important in evaluating these. Oh, well, if you look at the distance from the end of the uh, a cuff to where uh, this um, staple is, uh, it's too too long to to to, to put in place and then tack down. I, I I don't know how they repair this. It doesn't stretch there. That that tendon is is uh, stiff and. Uh, yeah. I, I don't. The insertion point that, of the tendon is right here. Yeah, that 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 repair it, is uh, well. I just don't know how they can pull that tendon that far down. And uh, obviously, uh, the repair was not very good. Yeah. So the uh, that ten the tendon isn't good. So uh, I don't know how you can fix it. Okay. I, I think this was probably um, uh, irreparable uh, supras, um, well, supraspinatus. Yeah, well, actually, the, the tendon, the signal intensity within the tendon itself looks pretty good. The muscle does not have fatty atrophy. So by imaging criteria, this patient should be a good candidate for repair. Uh, but what, what's happened here is that they tried to repair it down to the foot plate here. The, here are the suture anchors here, and they, they had sutures coming over. But what happened is that construct tore, and it retracted back again. But it retracted relatively slowly so the scar could form uh, as the tendon retracted back. But, but you have to take the tendon, um, the cuff, and over, over the greater tuberosity. Uh, to have the um, um, anchors 
effective so, so you can use the sutures. You're, you're, you're looking at about uh, two and a half centimeters of retraction. Right, uh, right. Of a, of a stiff tendon. That's too far to... Uh, yeah, but, but the, the, retraction, the retraction occurred in the muscle. It's the muscle that retracted. Yeah, I understand that, uh, but uh, that, that, that's a, a very long uh, distance uh, to, 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 to uh, use the anchor shot. Okay. If you, the, the plate is, uh, is superior to the anchors. Now, if the anchors were superior, tacking down the tendon, that would be okay but what they did they pulled it way too far and they probably abducted the arm uh, to 70 or so degrees and it just didn't hold okay yep good thanks john okay uh now here's a, a 60 year old with chronic pain and this was a rule out of rotator cuff tear uh pablo oh let's see no sahar what do you think of this Okay, we have high-grade articular surface tear of the supraspinatus with some traction cystic changes in the greater porosity of the attachment. Wait, wait, what do you mean by high-grade? So it looks like it's more than 50%. Okay, so, so you think this is a partial tear, not a full thickness tear? Yes, okay. partial thickness, yeah. All right, so this is on 10-4-2010. Here's some more views from 10 4 2010 uh, mm -hmm. again i guess it looks very similar uh, in this particular case now notice that the muscular tendinous junction is approximately retracted to the glenoid and this distance is probably about two centimeters this distance is about two centimeters so if you looked at this it looks like there is proximal retraction so how could you get retraction if it's just a partial tear? Uh, is it like a chronic tear with a scarring or? Okay, so we see that there's no contrast going into the subacromial subdeltoid bursa, and therefore <laughs> from the old arthrogram days, this is considered a negative arthrogram. But again, we've got to explain why we have proximal retraction here. And there we can see this is really a full thickness tear. And this is just scar in situ, which is made at watertight. Uh, but the ten there's a full thickness tear here. The tendon retracted back to there. The muscular tendinous junction retracted back to here. So when you see this kind of retraction of both the muscular tendinous junction and the distal end of the tendon, even though we see some black structure here, uh, still intact and it's watertight, this is actually a complete tear with scar in situ. And uh, we described that the, the surgeon uh, initially looked in from the glenohumeral joint space. Uh, and what he saw here is that this is the torn tendon. There was a full thickness tendon tear that was retracted. This is the scar in situ, which was actually making the water site teal seal so that the the contrast would not go into the glenohumeral, into the subacromial subdeltoid bursa. That's the scar. Uh, and then he went around and put the scope into the subacromial subdeltoid bursa. And uh, here he can see there's some calcification here, but this is all scar tissue. Uh, and so arthroscopically he confirmed it. They then removed the scar tissue and they did a uh, primary repair of the tendon. Uh, and this was, uh, so this was uh, surgically proven to be a watertight scar in situ. So it's important then in looking at cases like this to really look, oops, sorry, look at where the muscular tendon junction is, where the distal tendon is, and then you can infer then that this is really a, a complete tear with scar in situ, which ch changes the management because this was a, a <clears throat> Uh, this was a complete tear, and the patient did well with, with surgery. So why don't we stop there, and we will start uh, from here next time. Okay, any questions?
Oh, you said Monday. Yeah, I'll be. Uh, Monday. We're not doing anything tomorrow, are we? Yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you for bringing. Doctor Cruz. Uh, tomorrow I will be out of town, so we won't do it tomorrow. Yes. How about Monday? We will do it Monday, unless I get back to you otherwise. Uh, Doctor Cruz. I promise. <laughs> Okay. I have a question. Where are you going Dr. out of town? Uh, I'm actually. 